Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Masoud Ulia, and I'm a uh, faculty in the School of Engineering at uh, Wentworth University. And I'm here um, with another problem related to the subject of mechanics of material and uh, to the uh, topic of the section modulus. Now, this section modulus, um, and I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to first uh, define it for you. Very important in uh, beam design and beam selection. Very, uh, mo most civil engineers, when they wanna you know, select the beam in construction, they use uh, this idea, this uh, concept for selecting a beam. So let me actually remove my uh, video if I could, and then I will uh, come back and solve the, uh, show you the problem, first the definition and then the problem. So hang on. So let me do this and get rid of my video so I can flatten my iPad and get to work. Sorry for the noise. So first of all, guys, what is section modulus? Um, so in the uh, equation that will give you the uh, the bending stress, meaning sigma equal mc over i, known as flexure formula, right? Uh, if you rearrange the equation, so sigma is the bending stress, right? M is the moment, and typically you will look at the moment itself. C is, let's say if you have an I beam, right? Or any beam, by the way, symmetric beam, or not, even non-symmetric beam. I is the moment of inertia with respect to the axis of bending through the centroid. Uh, and C is the distance from the centroidal axis to either the top fiber because it's symmetric or the bottom fiber, okay? So if we rearrange this equation, in other words, we write it like this, M divided by I over C. This is basically the same equation. But this ratio of I over C is known as the section modulus and denoted by S. So section modulus is nothing but the ratio of I divided by C. I with respect to this axis and over half of the depth, basically. So if I re call this now S, so look what happens to this equation. Sigma is equal to M over S. So you can calculate... Uh, Bending a stress based on this formula. But the idea is that the S we can get from a table. So you actually solving for S. S in this equation becomes maximum moment divided by sigma. This is uh, determined from loading and a, you know, a shear bending moment diagram, a, mo a moment diagram, you get the maximum moment. And this one is from the material property. So in this case, we are talking about, or the, and the example I'm going to show you uh, is going to be a steel beam. So this could be like the yield, or it could be ultimate divided by some factor of safety, and so on. So typical structural steel, you know, A992 or A36, they have certain properties. They have their own yield strength, right? Or they have their own ultimate strength, uh, UTS, right? So maximum moment comes from the loading and sigma max is from the material. You calculate S. Once you calculate S, what do you do? You go to a table. All right. So that's what I, the, the problem I want to show you today. All right. So let me show you what problem I want to work on. So I have a beam here for you, right? Suppose this beam with, uh, you know, a pin and a roller here, right? Uh, subjected to these two loads, these are 40 kip, 40,000 pound, and 20 kip, 20,000 pound, right? And then suppose we are given that for this particular beam made of steel, let's say, uh, the allowable bending stress is 24 KSI. So remember, if this was A36, right, the yield is what? The yield is 36 KSI. So basically, you're building a factor of safety of 1.5 into it. So 36 over 1.5, you 
you want to reduce the, uh, the maximum stress, right? So you want to be safe. And also, why don't we give you all, why don't I give you also the allowable shear stress, sorry. Uh, let's say that's about uh, 15 KSI, right? So that's the shear stress due to what shear load, all right, transfer shear stress. All right, so then I want to select a suitable wide flange beam. Steel beam, obviously. So wide flange beam are called the W beams. And um, I'll show you the table in a minute. All right, guys. So what we need, according to the equation that I had a minute ago for you, section modulus is what? M divided by sigma. Sigma is already given. That goes right there. That's a material property. I have to find maximum moment, right? So how do I do uh, find that? I have to draw a shear bending moment diagram. So obviously I got to find the reaction here. I'm going to call that A, A, Y, for example, and then call this point B, B, Y. You, you know the process. I have videos on how to get reactions and how to draw a shear bending moment diagram. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Let me just get the uh, reaction for you. So take moment about A, say counterclockwise is positive. So BY, the moment of BY about A is BY times 12, right? Positive. The moment of 40 about A is 40 times six. And the moment of 20 about A is 20 times uh, 18 equal zero, go ahead, solve for BY. It appears BY happens to be 50 kip, 50,000 pounds, and then balance the forces. You got 60 here. If this takes 50, so this must be 10, right? Obviously by inspection or balance forces in the Y direction. All right, guys, you got these uh, reactions, so I'm gonna go to the next page, guys. I have already drawn the uh, shear bending moment diagram here for you. Well, basically from a textbook. Uh, so look, I have the 10 and 50, those are the reaction. You know how to draw a shear bending moment diagram, right? The shear diagram obviously needed to draw the moment diagram. So you go up with concentrated load, you follow the direction of the load, 10 up, remain constant then go down 40, right? So that brings you to negative 30. Then it stay constant here at negative 30. Then you hit 50, you go up 50, that brings you to 20. And then that 20 gets closed by this 20 here. But then you also know that the area under the uh, shear diagram, right? Area under V is net moment, right? Based on what equation? based on the fact that V is, or delta V is the integral of, uh, I'm sorry, I have it just the opposite. Delta M is um, the integral of V, based on the fact that uh, dV, uh, uh, dM dx is equal to, uh, dv dx, I'm sorry, is equal to m, right? Uh, so, so go ahead, find the area of each section. So this is a 60 kip foot. This one is 30 by 60, 180, right? And this one is 20 by 620, right? So that's how you got these values. So these are going to be all the, the integral of a straight line is a... Uh, the, the integral of a constant, right, it is a straight line. So we go from zero to 60, then 60 minus uh, 180, because this is a negative area, put you at 120, and then back to zero because you're adding the 120. All right, you've seen this before. There are many videos. I have a few videos on shear bending moment diagram. You may as well take advantage of that. All right, so what is important in this diagram? In terms of the moment, the maximum absolute moment is the 120, is this guy. Don't worry about the sign. The maximum absolute is important. And also later on, because we are given the, um, the allowable shear stress here, remember? Allowable shear stress is also given, right? So we have to have the shear load as well, uh, maximum shear load. The absolute maximum shear load is 30, is this guy. 
again, unit, uh, the, uh, the sign is not important. All right, we're ready to add, calculate the section modulus. Here we go. Section modulus is maximum moment divided by maximum stress. Maximum stress, remember, was 24 KSI. Remember, KSI was what? Uh, kip per inch squared, right? A maximum moment is 120 uh, kip foot, which I should switch it to what? Sorry, guys. I should switch it to kip inch. So I'll multiply it by 12. One foot is 12 inch, right? Because I want to for these two units to be consistent. So if you do uh, the calculation, you get 60. And look at the units. I forgot to tell you that the units of section modulus is in length cube, inch cube, for example. That's a typical unit or millimeter cube. All right, so this becomes 60 inch cube, keep and keep, cancel, feet, feet, cancel, inch square times inch here becomes inch cube. Here we go. So at minimum, we have to have a 60 inch cube section modulus. So go look in the table for the section modulus of white flange beams, W shaped beams, right? That are at least 60. So you can always pick, you should always pick larger. So let me talk about a little bit about W. W, uh, A, so they, they come like this, A times B. The first number is actually, W means white flange, okay? White flange, right? So the flanges are white. So these are this is the flange, right? So two flanges. A is actually the approximate depth, not the exact depth, approximate depth, rounded depth. Uh, and B actually is the weight per linear foot. So whatever that is, pound per foot. All right, let's go to the table. We're looking for a section modulus of 60. So I have the table here for you. All right, section modulus is right here. So look for one that is a little bit larger. So look, that's one. I'll use a different color. Larger than 60, maybe we can get, uh, but we don't have it here. So it looks like I didn't do a good job here. But what about, uh, yeah, 14 by 43. Yeah, I have it here, 62.7. So I have the choice of both 68.4 and 62.7. See, this is the section modulus, right? So looks like, a W 18 by 40 is good. Also a W 14 by 43. But you see, the second number here is the approximate weight. So if I pick a W 18 by 40, compare W 18 by 40 versus W 14 by 43, you see this has a larger weight because that has to be sometimes accounted for in the design. So I pick a W 18 by 40 here. So I select the W 18 by 40, which has a section modulus of, what was it, 68.4 inch cube, which is larger than what I got, and that's good. But actually, you don't want to pick too, too much larger, okay? So even I think 10 by 43 would do it to this one, okay? But anyways, this one now, we know that approximate weight is 40 pounds per foot. You could actually, account for that if you want in your calculation. And I was, what, what will happen is that now you could put a distributed load here on this guy and recalculate everything. Redraw shear diagram, re re get your, so this is like a distributed load of uniform load of 40 pounds per foot. All right, and that I believe if you recalculate and get the maximum moment, section modulus is still is gonna be a smaller than 68.4. So you're gonna be safe. So that's why it's better to go with a smaller load, load, okay? So now, one other thing we have to check, remember we were given up here also the allowable shear stress, right? Are we safe in terms of the shear stress? Now, shear stress usually, guys, is not the mode of failure. So that's usually is not causing failure compared to what bending is stress. But look guys, tau transfer shear stress is calculated based on VQ over IT. 
but in wide flange beam, uh, and I have videos on this, by the way, guys, you can go check it out. Uh, actually, maximum shear stress happens right here on the neutral axis. And you could approximate that as V divided by area of the web, all right? As if the web is doing all the work. So shear stress, transfer shear stress is zero on the top fiber and bottom fiber is just like the opposite of sigma and maximum here. So you could you could do the approximation here. What was our maximum V here from the shear diagram? Our maximum V was uh, right here, uh, 30 kip, right? So let's put that here. And what's the area of the web? Let's see, we picked this guy, right? So this will give you every, everything you wanna know. Uh, the depth uh, of the beam approximately 17.9 and the web uh, or the depth is 11.8. I'm sorry, uh, I can't see this. I gotta erase this, sorry guys. Uh, uh, the depth is uh, 18, actually. It's right here, right? So let me see. Why is the depth is not... Yeah, the depth actually is 17.9, sorry. And uh, the web thickness is 0.315. And so let me go up. So basically, this is 17.9. I confuse myself by looking at that table. And actually, even though this is the web, but you can take the whole thing, uh, the entire thing, uh, the depth uh, approximately. So, and the, the width of the web, remember it was 0 0.315, 0 0.315 inch. So the area becomes, uh, seventeen point nine. What what I have shaded here for you? This one, right? Inch by point three one five inch, right? And if you calculate this, this is going to be a relatively small number, five point three two ksi, which is much much smaller than what's given. So we are safe by selecting this beam. So that's less than what, less than the fifteen ksi that was given in the problem, remember? Right here. So we are all good. So this selection was right. So this W18 by 40 is a good selection. It uh, can handle both bending stress and shear stress. So guys, uh, I appreciate uh, you uh, watching this video as always if you uh, like the video and subscribe to my channel i really appreciate it i'll be back with more videos more on different topics dynamics statics vibration system dynamics and so on so have a good day and see you soon